What happens when the essence of democracy, the voice of the people, is silenced? What are the consequences when a society's rights and dignity are not just overlooked, but systematically and undermined? To understand the gravity of this situation, we will delve into a detailed discourse, exploring the overlooked plight of the Kuki community. Nestled in the heart of India, this marginalized group grappling with the harsh realities of a long-standing conflict, practically ripping their lives apart. The Kuki community, once thriving and vibrant, is known for its rich cultural heritage and values. Their society, with over 200 villages, each pulsating with life, culture and a history dating back centuries, paints a colorful canvas of diversity. These villages, once humming with activities, had a rhythm and pulse of their own, However, their continuity and existence have been brutally disrupted. Now imagine these villages, these hubs of cultural diversity and being forcibly uprooted. Their inhabitants, the rightful custodians of the land, are torn from their ancestral homes, their lives shattered and displaced. Imagine the painful reality of families torn their homes, reduced to dust, their lives upended by a ruthless wave of displacement. The Kuki community, once and thriving, now finds its existence threatened. Families are separated, the bonds of their society decimated, and a rich tapestry of social life, culture, and history irreparably. Their ancestral lands, their homes, their very existence wiped out in a wave of ruthless displacement. The absence of a separate administration for the Kuki community serves as a stark reminder of rampant injustice. It echoes the need for equitable governance, a governance structure that respects and upholds the rights of all communities. It underlines the importance of giving voice to the voiceless, of acknowledging their presence, their rights and their needs. The absence of a separate administration for the Kuki community serves as a stark reminder of the importance of equitable governance a governance that respects and upholds the rights of all communities. The human toll of the Manipur conflict is staggering. This conflict, buried deep within the heart of Manipur, India, has claimed an immense number of lives, each loss carving a profound chasm of grief within the local communities. With over 150 kooky lives lost, it's not just a statistic. It represents the hope, dreams and futures that have been mercilessly snuffed out. Every fallen soul narrates a heart-wrenching tale. They were fathers, mothers, sons and daughters, their lives abruptly ended, leaving their families grappling with an impossible void. The thousands injured weren't just victims of a faceless conflict, they were individuals whose lives got entwined in the violent vortex of strife. They bore the brunt of the ceaseless violence, their bodies bearing the physical scars of the brutal conflict. These scars aren't just physical, but also psychological, an enduring echo of trauma within their souls. The violence may have ceased, but these echoes reverberate, a constant ghostly whisper of pain and suffering. These individuals, families and communities suffered not just from the violence, but also from the crippling aftermath. Whether it was financial hardship, emotional distress, or the struggle to rebuild their lives. The Manipur conflict wasn't just a war. It was a tragedy that ripped through the fabric of society. It was a soul-destroying cataclysm that left in its wake shattered communities, their resilience tested beyond their limits. This grim reminder of the state's failure continues to cast a long, unforgiving shadow over the lives of its citizens, a constant grim reminder of the state's failure to protect its citizens. The Kuki community's trust in the government has been severely eroded due to perceived bias from both the central and state governments. Over the years, the Kuki community has been on the receiving end of what they deem as prejudiced policies and actions. These actions, often seen as biased, have resulted in a significant loss of faith in the capacity of the government to be just and fair. Reports of preferential treatment towards certain communities have not gone unnoticed by the Kuki people. It is perceived that these communities have enjoyed the government's favor in various ways, such as in the allocation of resources, implementation of developmental projects, and even in the delivery of justice, while the Kukis have been overlooked, sidelined, and neglected. The perceived marginalization of the Kuki community has only deepened the sense of injustice felt by the community, causing an ever-growing chasm between them and the authorities. The Kuki community's interests have been seemingly ignored. 
This neglect goes beyond the mere allocation of resources. It also extends to the government's seeming indifference towards their cultural heritage and ancestral rights, further compounding their sense of being marginalized. Furthermore, government's failure to address grievances in a timely and effective manner has resulted in a deeper sense of alienation. The community's pleas for the provision of adequate assistance have mostly fallen on deaf ears, causing frustration and resentment. This perceived apathy from the government in holding the perpetrators accountable for their actions has added to the cookies' disillusionment with the system. The seeming disregard for their calls for accountability has only fueled their sense of alienation. The failure to address grievances, provide adequate assistance and hold the perpetrators accountable has only served to alienate the Kuki community further. In the face of such adversity, the Kuki community's call of no justice, no vote resonates louder than ever. This phrase is not just a simple slogan shouted out in protests, it is a chant that echoes in the heart of every Kuki individual, young and old reverberating with their collective spirit. Each word uttered is a cry for justice, a plea for their rights, a demand for recognition and a call for the restoration of their dignity. Amidst the din of everyday life, amidst the chaos that often surrounds us, it's easy to forget or ignore the narratives of the marginalized, the oppressed. Yet the Kuki community stands strong, resolute in their determination, unwavering in their demands. They present a powerful image of resilience and unity, testament to their indomitable spirit in the face of adversity. To them, no justice, no vote is not just an articulation of their dissatisfaction with the political system, it is a reiteration of their unyielding conviction. It is a potent reminder that they will not be rendered voiceless, they will not be pushed to the sidelines, they will not be overlooked. They demand accountability, they demand fairness. They seek to have their voices heard, to have their concerns acknowledged, to have their rights honored. They want to be seen, to be recognized, not just as members of a community, but as equal citizens of a nation. It's not just about voting rights, it's about their basic human rights. The gravity of their situation may be poignant, but they do not stand alone in their struggle. Their call to action reverberates far and wide, touching hearts, stirring souls, and awakening the collective conscience of a nation. Ultimately, it isn't just a demand for accountability and fairness, but an assertion of their rights, a plea for recognition, and a call for the restoration of their dignity. To sum up, the predicament of the Kuki community is a stark reminder of the harrowing outcomes when the fundamental principles of democracy are threatened. The alarming situation that the Kuki community is currently experiencing is a mirror reflection of the dark side of society. When the democratic values that we hold dear are undermined, it's not just one community that suffers. It's a collective setback for humanity as each individual's right to freedom, equality and justice is compromised. This situation underscores the immediate need for justice, unfeigned accountability and equitable governance. Governance where the voices of the marginalized are heard, where the rule of law is upholding the rights of the minority and where justice is not just written in statutes, but is practiced and experienced. The plight of the Kuki community is a compelling call to action that we must not disregard. It is a plea for us to utilize fiber of our being, every resource at our disposal and every platform available to us to bring about the change we wish to see. It is a clarion call to all those who believe in human rights, justice and fair play to stand and act. Before we wrap up this discussion, it's crucial for our viewers to engage and participate in this cause. You can do so by subscribing to Zalinga Media for more profound and insightful content. By subscribing, you are not only staying informed, but also contributing to a mission that aims to shed light on issues often overlooked. Your subscription is more than just a click, it's a commitment to understanding the world us in its raw form. By joining forces, we can raise more awareness, amplify the suppressed voices and work tirelessly towards a more equitable world. We believe in the power of unity, the strength of diversity and the potential of collective action. It's a movement for change, a movement for justice and a movement for a better future. Because when one community's rights are threatened, it is a threat to us all. This not just about the Kuki community, it's about every individual, every community, every nation. It's about us as global citizens understanding the interconnectedness of our actions and their impacts. 
It's about standing firm against the threats to human rights, and it's about fostering a world where equity, justice, and freedom are not just ideals, but realities.